Why am I doing this? I think I can explain what's going on here. Yes, it's me, Matt Parker. Don't panic, Steve Mould will be back in a moment. In fact, I've got a framed picture of Steve here in case you miss him too much. Steve and I have this ongoing video challenge system until we get to a million subscribers, which at the time of recording has not happened yet. So it was my turn to challenge Steve and I saw the video that Derek made on Veritasium about a ridiculous contraption which could go faster than the wind in the direction of the wind. But along the way, Derek mentioned that a sailing boat can do a similar thing, but not directly downwind. And Derek did a bit of a hand wavy, oh, you know, angles, aerofoils, back to the main story. And I thought, you know what? I want an intuitive explanation for how this works. I want someone who's gonna make a ridiculous model to help me understand what's going on. And so I've challenged Steve Mould to do exactly that. We'll get to this ridiculous contraption in a second, but first, let's take a really naive look at how sailing might work. I've positioned this sail so it's perpendicular to the direction of travel of this boat, and it's facing me. I'm the wind in this scenario. So when I blow, the wind pushes on the sail and that pushes the boat forwards. That's pretty straightforward. And actually in this configuration, the sailboat can't travel faster than the wind, which is why, by the way, Derek's contraption is so remarkable in his video. This particular configuration of sail and boat isn't desperately useful. Like how often is it that the place you want to go happens to also be the direction that the wind is blowing? What if you wanted to travel in this direction relative to the wind? Well, all you have to do is turn the boat into the direction you want to travel while maintaining the orientation of the sail seems to work quite well, but it's actually a flawed approach. The more you turn the boat, the less well it works. Let's look at the extreme case where you want to travel perpendicular to the wind. The wind doesn't propel the boat forward at all. It simply tries to push it over. What you do instead in this scenario is angle the sail at about 45 degrees. And there you go, we could just about get the boat to go in the direction that we want it to. To be fair, it's also going a little bit in the direction of the wind, which we don't want to happen. That's because it's a toy boat and I'll get to the details of why in a minute, but for now, let's assume that it worked perfectly and only went in this direction. It's worth looking at this particular configuration in more detail to see what's going on. Here's a simplified diagram of the sailboat. You can tell when I do my own graphics, can't you? Because they're so good. So the sail deflects the air like this. Actually, it deflects the air on the far side of the sail as well because of the coanda effect, which we won't go into detail here, but the point is the air has changed direction by the time it's finished interacting with the sail. An object only changes direction when it feels a force. If this is the original direction and this is the new direction, then the force must be in this direction. Okay, so that force is coming from the sail. The sail is pushing the wind into a new direction. But every action has an equal and opposite reaction, so the sail feels a force as well in the opposite direction. And of course, that pushes on the whole boat. This force is called lift, by the way, same force that's generated by an aeroplane wing. The word lift is a bit confusing in this context. Like in the context of a plane, the plane is being lifted up against gravity in the upwards direction, but lift here is happening in the horizontal plane. So it's a confusing word, but it's the same thing. So why doesn't the boat move in that direction? Well, it's because of the shape of the boat underwater. The part of the boat that's underwater is long and thin. And look, when I put my hand in water, it's intuitive to see that it's hard to move my hand side to side. It meets lots of resistance from the water and it's easier to move my hand backwards and forwards because there's less resistance in that direction. And it's the same with boats. The resistance to sideways motion isn't absolute. And in fact, in the case of our toy boat, there's quite a bit of sideways motion because the shape of the boat underwater isn't very long and thin. But for real sailboats, it's negligible we're gonna assume it's zero. So we can take this force vector and break it into components in this direction and this direction. This direction has no effect because of the resistance of the water, but there is a component in this direction, so we expect the boat to travel in that direction. The same is true on land, by the way. Land yachting or sand yachting or land sailing is where you use wheels on land. The wheels present resistance to sideways motion, but reduce resistance in the backwards and forwards motion. I've created a physical model in that vein, which I hope will explain why sailboats can travel faster than the wind. So look, the wind comes in from here, it pushes on the sail, and it pushes the boat 
can call it a boat, can't we? Uh, in this direction here. So what is the theoretical maximum speed of this boat? Let's assume that there's no resistance. That's a ridiculous assumption, but it's useful for our understanding here. Well, the maximum speed of the boat is the speed at which the sail exactly misses the incoming air. Let me explain what I mean by that. Imagine you've got a packet of air coming in at this speed and the boat is moving at just the right speed that the sail exactly misses that packet of air. The packet of air is unaffected by the sail at this precise speed. For completeness, here's a whole load of packets of air failing to be affected by that sail because the boat is moving at just the right speed. Actually, there's something confusing about this graphic, isn't there? I think it's sort of an optical illusion, actually. If the boat were going any slower, that packet of air would be deflected slightly, and so the boat would increase in speed until it reached that magic speed. Again, this is all assuming that there's no resistance. With the sail at 45 degrees like this, the speed of the wind and the speed of the boat are actually the same. Look, by the time that packet of air has traveled this distance, the boat has traveled this distance. They match when the sail is at 45 degrees. But what if we change the angle of the sail so it's like this? There's actually now too much friction between my hands and the sail. So I'm gonna to switch to this stick with a wheel configuration. It's pretty high tech over here. So now in the time it takes for this packet of air to move this distance, the sailboat has moved this distance. It's actually traveling faster than the wind. And remember, if the boat were going any slower than that, it would be deflecting the air and there would be a reaction force speeding the boat up. At this point, you might think, well, why don't we angle the sail so it's really, really close to the direction of travel? That way we could go much faster than the speed of the wind. Well, there's a trade-off and you can see it here. Look, when the sail is really close to the direction of travel, the component of the lift force in that direction is really small. So it would take a long time to reach that top speed. And actually that's only true in a world with no resistance. In a world where there is resistance, which is to say the real world, the ship wouldn't be able to get up much speed before the drag force exactly cancels out that meager component of the lift force in the forward direction. So in practical terms, there's an optimum angle for the sail. And actually that's part of the skill of being a good sailor. I can also use this model to show how it's possible to travel against the direction of the wind. But first I just wanna talk about the shape of the sail compared to this model that I've used. We talked about how a sail generates lift in the same way as an aeroplane wing, and an aeroplane wing tends to have this cross-sectional shape. It doesn't have to be that shape. Planes can fly with a wing shaped like this, angled into the direction of travel. It's just that for complicated aerodynamic reasons, this is a more efficient shape. The same thing is going on between my model and real sailboats. My model is this flat surface. Well, sailboats act more like that curved profile of an aeroplane wing. So how can you sail into the wind? Well, you can't sail directly into the wind, but you can sail a little off from directly. I'll just show you with the model. So the wind is coming in this direction. We want to travel in this direction. We angle the sail like this, and there you go the boat moves forwards. This isn't exactly how the sail would be positioned in reality because in this model, I'm making the force vector be in the same direction as the direction of the wind. But the vector in a real sailboat is based on the change of direction of the wind. But it's the same basic idea. Actually, you can travel directly into the wind. You just have to take a zigzag path and that's called tacking. There is another way to explain how you can sail faster than the wind and maybe it's the explanation that you've heard. For me, it's not very intuitive but I will type it out in the pinned comment because that's likely where we're going to talk about it. If you haven't seen Derek's video yet it really is remarkable the link is in the card and the description don't forget to stick around to the end of this video for some more chat with Matt Parker. You know that feeling when you're presented with a new puzzle and you go ooh, ooh. Hmm. You start to think about the ways that you're gonna solve this thing. I remember getting that feeling when I first saw a Sudoku. But here's the thing about the sponsor of this video, Brilliant. It's a website and an app that basically gives you that feeling every time you pick it up. It's a new puzzle or a new problem that you've got to solve. Every time you look at it, you go, ooh. Hmm. Brilliant is actually a learning platform. So it's designed on this principle that the best way to learn something is by doing it for yourself. So you work through these puzzles and problems. They've got courses on broad topics like 
mechanics or logic, but you can take deep dives into subjects like cryptocurrency or quantum computing. And actually they've got a good search function as well. So if you're ever thinking, do you know what? I'd like to learn more about a particular thing. For example, after watching this video, actually I do want to know about how Lyft works on a wing. You could search for Bernoulli, for example, and start investigating that stuff through puzzles. Because it's an app as well as a website, I actually get on Brilliant just before going to sleep. Like a lot of people might scroll through social media in bed or read a book, not me. If you're the sort of person who sees a new puzzle and goes, hmm, oh. Interesting. I recommend you check out Brilliant. If you go to my special URL, you can check it out for free, no strings attached. Go to brilliant.org forward slash Steve Mould. The link is also in the description. So check out Brilliant today. That was good. I'm, <laughs> I'm convinced. When you were pushing it with your hand and it was the yeah. hand pushing that was then just moving the sail out of the way, I was like, yeah. I don't know. But then the argument about when you're at the wind speed, if it was going faster or slower, the sail would speed up or slow down to match. I was like, okay. Yeah. That is critical because in the model, the, the force vector is always just the direction of the wind, yeah. which isn't really true. Uh, yeah, it's so, a deflection yeah, of the that, wind, yeah. Yeah, so I fixed that. <laughs> is it like everything with lift where there's a bunch of Bernoulli fans who are now a yeah. bit emotional. Yeah, I think that you can explain Lyft in terms of uh, Newton or in terms of Bernoulli. In fact, I'll link to a video, might be a Veritasium video actually, uh, Think about it. Classic um, Derek. I mean. I'm prepared to sign off on what you've done. In fact, I'm prepared to now move on to the next challenge I'm gonna give you. Oh no, because I know, because I've reached a million now. Well, yeah, you've reached so, a million, right? Yeah. It's not exclusive or. <laughs> Right? I, I need to reach <laughs> we a did minute. It. Well, no, you've, you've done it. So there's no point me doing another video on my channel to encourage people to subscribe uh -huh. to you because you're at a million. Oh, yeah. Which face has been better at getting to a million subscribers? You need this face on your channel. Here's the challenge, right? I was on Reddit and I saw this thing. It was this power cord and it was stuck. The power bit couldn't get through this hole underneath this handle. And the person does a loop thing and then the handle goes through and it all comes out. It actually sounds a lot like the kind of thing you'd find on brilliant.org. You're like, huh. I think I will go to bed and think about this. I hope you're not uh, being sarcastic about the sponsor of my video, Brilliant.org. No, Steve Mould. no, I was not. I'm a big fan of Brilliant.org. Yeah. Somewhere, it's just your your sort of your baseline voice is is quite sarcastic. My so resting sarcasm voice. Yet, yeah, no, I accept that. <laughs> I will come back to you Great. with an explanation of the power cord thing. <laughs>